Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with some interesting terrain stuff. We are carrying on with our swampy swampy set, our 40k sort of swampy set. Playing around with a few ideas. And I've decided I want some sort of rocks and mounds and stuff in it. Now, I don't want normal rocks. And I've decided since I'm just trying things, I'm getting back into the swing of things, we try something different. And so here, what I have is... I've got some expanding foam. Yeah, it's a big can of expanding foam. And as you can see, I've got a bit of plastic down. Now, my basic battle plan is I like, I've played with this stuff before, okay? And when you put it down in little blobs, it creates these sort of like blobs with pores in and ridges and stuff like that. And I'm wondering whether we can get some sort of like organic, nurgly, swampy sort of looking rocks out of it. Yeah. Now, I don't need big pieces. I need lots of little pieces. And I'm just going to carry on shaking this. Yeah. Shut up. My arm's getting tired. I'm out of practice. Right. Anyway, as I said, yeah, we don't need large pieces like that. What I'm actually after is lots of little clusters, which means I'm going to have to spray lots of little bits. Now, I don't like the look of that. Me and spraying in the studio it does not go well. Uh, those of you who've been with the channel a long time will remember when we sprayed the ceiling. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now I've picked up a couple of these nozzles because with this expanding foam, when it fills these nozzles, yeah, you only get one use out of it. Now this is a heavy can, it's got a lot of uses, so I've got a few more of these, so we can give it a couple of goes over a couple of days. Yeah, that sort of thing. But what I want to do, it's sort of just basically take you along on this, yeah? Take you on the journey of basically putting these rocks together and then combining them with, you know, swampy, swampy bases. Yeah, so that's the battle plan. <laughs> Here we go. Right, got no idea how this is gonna come out, how this is gonna turn out. So we'll go center mass first, just in case we overspray. Hey, I do not like that sound. Okay, right, that's how much it's coming out. That's weird. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to come out better than that. I don't. Bounce this up and down. Let's wrap that round. Oh, you see, this is what you come for. It's still got a lot of weight in it. I can see it expanding already. Ah, oh, don't stick. Right. Oh, gee, gee, get off. This is what you come for, folks. Utter terrain chaos. Ah. Uh, should have wore gloves. See, it's right. Let's stick that on there. You can see. Great. Right, I'll give it another go. Right, that seems to be better. What's up with this? Right. I'm going to have a guess that this can is way too cold. Yeah, because I can shake it up and get some out of it, but not much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some hot water. I'm going to put it, submerge the can in some hot water to warm it up. Wait. <laughs> Fixed it. You idiot. Right. Give me a quick flash. We're going to reset this. <sighs> you bloody idiot. 
Okay folks, we're back, I've refreshed the area, and the quick thing to learn from that is always read the instructions. Now other YouTubers, yeah, they would have like just scrapped that, refreshed and started all professional. But you know me, you ought to learn from my mistakes. So, holding the can upside down, let's see what we can do. Now what I want to try and do is to make some little rocks. They're not little. Make some big ones. All right. Uh... Okay, we're starting to blob out a bit, interestingly. Yeah, not sure how this is going to work. But this is the idea. This was the whole plan to figure it out. Let's see if we can get some blobs. See, it's easy to do the big ones. Okay, yeah. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Right. Now what I am thinking is I can just sort of snap them, shape them, that sort of thing, see what we can do with them. So, there we are. There is the monstrosity. We don't know how it's going to turn out. Yeah? I and you will find out after this break. Right folks, it's been 24 hours and our blobs have set. As you can see, nice and hard. They have expanded a little and they've expanded a little just into each other, but they haven't become one amalgamated mess. Yeah, which is something I'm grateful for. Yeah, I was worried a little bit, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, but it's turned out all right. Now, look at them first. Look at those swampy rocks. Now, one of the benefits of using bin bags is they just come off. Just like that, yeah? So, let me bring this up to the camera. What do you think of that as a rock? It's got a really nice sort of organic, nurgly feel to it. Let's pick some more, let's pick a biggie. Yeah, right, I'm not sure if this is dry underneath, so, yeah it is. Right, see you've got a bit of an undulating texture on the underneath, yeah, it's not completely flat. Yeah, obviously it's gone down on, on top of a plastic bag and those are the ripples from it. You know what? Could we use this in plastic bags to make rock moulds? Takes the shape. Takes the shape rather well. Right, let's not have a diversion just yet. Okay, but I like that idea. But if we look at the rock itself, yeah, now that is a nice organic rock. Yeah, organic rock. <laughs> what an oxymoron. A nurgly rock. Yeah, that works. So let's grab some more. Yeah, what else we got? Now that's an interesting one. That could be used with a swamp piece. Put a pool in there, sort of thing. Yeah, I like that one. Simple ones there. Okay. Right, next thing I need to do is very quickly just de take all of these off this bag. So, I'll be back in a mo. Right, we've got them demolded. Yeah, and I've picked out a few of my favourites. Put roughly half over there and I've picked out sort of the best ones I like. Now we've got this nice rock. Yeah, loads of detail on there. Loads of opportunity for weathering. Bit of a round one. Some smaller sort of mid rocks. Another really interesting one. Yeah, like that one more that, yeah. We've got some smaller ones. 
and some Diddy ones as well. I need to practice on making the Diddy ones because the Diddy ones will be good for making small scatter pieces, yeah? Whereas when you're putting the squirty foam out, as you saw, it sort of comes out in big globs. So I need to get used to like, I think what I've got to do is just do like a long spray and just get bits of it and just flick it over places. We're going to have to have an experiment. Right, now, straight off, we can't use these straight as they are. First, let's have a look at the material themselves, yeah? The dog poo. This is what I meant, yeah? I'm going to have to break this up. Now, this stuff, it's quite soft, yeah? It's an expanding foam used for filling gaps, so it's not... Even though when we talk about foam, we're used to having foam being quite hard and that sort of stuff, this stuff, it isn't. It does firm up a little bit over time, yeah, but it's not brilliant, which means we're going to have to hard coat it. Filler, Mod Podge, something like that. These pieces, they're not too bad. With a hard coat on, they should be fine. Now, the other thing about this stuff is it's easily riffable, shapeable, cuttable. Yeah, so we can adjust it quite easily, which is one of the reasons why I like it. Now, so how do we adjust it? Well, let me save me good bits. Yeah, and let's get this bit. So, it we've got a bit. It doesn't sit completely flat. As you can see, it's got sort of edges coming up underneath it. What we can do, dead simple, is a little bit of sandpaper. Yeah, put the sandpaper on. Now what you can do is a little bit of tape there, a little bit of tape there just to hold it down. And then it's just a matter of, I'll be back in a minute. And there we go. Yeah, just once the bottom sanded, just takes a little while, yeah, but now it will sit perfectly flat, yeah, as you can see. Which means, yeah, that we can start flattening these and adding them onto our terrain pieces. Now, my next job is, I've got a few of these to work through, yeah. Uh, I need to be reasonable, yeah. I, I should just do the ones I want to do, yeah. So I'm going to crack on with this, get the pieces I need to get done, done. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to integrate these into those terrain pieces over there and make some more to expand our set. Huzzah! It's all great. Dust is help. Dust mask time. Right, that's the sanding done and we are cracking on. Okay, as you can see, I am up to stuff. I'm making something, i.e. a mess. Yeah, first off, yeah, took a little bit of sanding, but as you can see, nice and flat. And these will now sit lovely and flat on our pieces. Which brings us to the fact that we need pieces to put them on, which is what we're working on now. Now, what I've done is I've grabbed some of the swamp pieces that we've got over in the set over there. And in the case of this one, yeah, I've ripped the tree off it. Yeah, ripped off the edge in the, what you call it, the sort of sculptor mold, the bulking loop, yeah, to glue on one of our pieces. And then once that's dry, we're going to just blend that in and give it a little bit of a stipple. Yeah, just to sort of firm it up. Yeah, but we're starting to get our rock textures on our pieces. And I'm going to do the same on here. Now, as you can see, I've just literally just ripped, yeah, a bit off. Next thing I need to do is just cut in, yeah, and get the bulk of it down. Now, the difficulty with cutting here isn't actually the sculptor mold. It's the hot glue. Uh, I've got to be careful because I don't want to lose my fingers. Right. So we're just basically taking that down. I've got some sandpaper, also got a bit of a rasp. Yeah, so I can thin bits down if I need to. And I don't need to get it perfectly flat. Yeah, I just need to get it so that this piece will stick nicely. So almost, I just need to take a little bit more off there. 
Yeah, the idea of combining these rocks in and taking bits off uh, and pulling them together. Ideally, I should have planned it at the start of the set. As you know, I wasn't thinking best back then. Yeah, and so this set has sort of evolved as we've gone, gone along. Yeah. And so I'm sort of adding bits as we go. Right, that's almost there. We need to just bolt that down. And so it means breaking bits off and putting them back together. It does take a little bit longer, but the thing you've got to remember is it's a hobby. We're supposed to enjoy it, not beat ourselves up over it, for God's sake. So that's what I intend to do. Enjoy it. Whilst well, getting, oh, watch my fingers. Whilst well, getting incredibly frustrated. It's not fun unless you do. Right, quick rasp. Quick clear down. And yeah, there we go. We can blend that in with a little bit of filler. All right, let's get some glue on this. Yeah, huge bottle of PVA. I've left me a small bottle at Watch Cullet at home when I was working on those Watch Cullet MDF bits. So this will do for now. Yeah, and just push that in there. Just like that. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. And then straight away you can see how our rocks are becoming part, yeah, of our terrain set. Yeah, now I've got this one here. We could perhaps get another rock into here somewhere. Maybe there. Maybe put something like that. I'm not sure or whether I'm overdoing it. Yeah, what I do know is I need to get a couple of these yeah, onto rocky bait, onto bases as well. Yeah, so that's my next job. Cut some bases up for the larger bits. Get these mounted. Get the trees mounted on them as well. Yeah, and then we'll go from there. Right, I'll be back once I've got my bases together and that sort of stuff. Chaos reigns supreme in the studios, just the way we like it. And everything is coming together nicely. I have taken our foam rocks. I've stuck them to some bases and also transitioned them into some of the other pieces. So here, have a look. So here you can see our bog standard foam rock. When you put it like that, you can start to see how it's coming together. Now, the one of the, this, as you can see, it's sealed down with PVA, nice and secure, but we've still got some work to do on it. But before we do, let's take you through some of the other pieces. I've got another piece here. Yeah, quite a simple one, that one. And then what I've done is I've taken the foam rocks and I've integrated them into some of our other pieces. This really helps to sort of carry the feeling through the set, yeah, and to sort of harmonize the set. So rather than just having, here are the swamp pieces, here are the rock pieces, I'm combining the swamp and the rock pieces, yeah, and it brings it all together. Right, so, yeah, with this one, uh, I think I ripped a tree off there. Yeah, shaved it down. We've got that one in there. That's looking good. Actually, I think I did show you these. I'm not sure. This one, yeah, got some simple rocks in there. Yeah, it looks a bit brownie and messy, but they'll tie in nicely. And then this one over here. Yeah, another little bit of rock on that one. Yeah, just a small one here but it's all gonna tie it together. Now, there's some work we need to do before we sort of crack on. Yeah, one, this stuff is, I mean, it's pretty firm, but we probably want something a little bit tougher. Now, I did consider stippling it with filler, but there's a chance I'll lose this sort of texture. So what I'm gonna do in the first instance, is give it a coat of Mod Podge, yeah? Wore it down a little, just give it a brush over. Now, once this is brushed over, yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go round these edges, round at the bottom, and we just need to seal those in the base, yeah? And for that, we're gonna use bog standard filler or spackle. 
yeah and then once that's done we've got a couple other things what we need to do is take the trees that we had yeah and reintegrate them into these pieces maybe that one there perhaps I'm not sure I've got to figure out where they're going to go but we'll reintegrate those and then we'll do the swamp edges and once we've got that done we should be in a position where we can come back and we can actually paint the rocks up we're not going to have these pieces finished in this video because I want to get these all to a certain stage then level them up in one go so we'll take it as far as I'm going and then the next one I'll be working across the set but the main thing is I'm making terrain and I tell you what while I just let me get a brush, I've got a brush, let me get some water, we can coat these up and we can have a chat while I do. Yeah, might as well, eh? Yeah. Are you enjoying the terrain? Are you happy I'm back? I'm happy I'm back. Right. Da -da -da -da. Basically, all I'm gonna do is give these a bit of a coat of Mod Podge. Yeah, we'll thin it down a little bit. Yeah, and I'm thinning it down on the fly here. Yeah, literally just dipping it in a bit of water and then just giving it a spread about. This will give us a nice hard coat. Now, while I brush this on, a bit of sh selfless, shameless promotion. Yeah, as you know, I am getting back into things. Yeah, but it's been a while since I've been on the old tubes and, and sort of been producing and things have fallen behind. Yeah, specifically my patron guys. Now, as you know, patrons, the way I sort of supported what I was doing, and I'm okay, yeah, I, I've, I've got the support of a few good people and we're cracking through, but, yeah, there's going to come a point come the summer where, unless I grow it, I'm going to be struggling again. So, I've got to shout out about it. Now, I am not just asking for you to willingly just jump on Patreon and throw me cash. Yeah, I've started doing some funky stuff on Patreon that you'll like. Patreon's tied into the Discord. Okay, so if you're a, a patron of mine, then when you join the Terraniacs Discord server, you get extra privileges and access to patron-only areas. And there's three patron-only areas. There's the weekly roundup, where you get to post pictures of what you've been working on, and then every week I look at it, I film a segment where I go through checking out your work and that sort of stuff. So if you want to see my work, yeah, and see what I think about it on video, yeah, that's the forum for you. On top of that, there's the Ask Mel forum. Yeah, and that's where if you've got any terrain problems that you're after, you're wondering about what you should do, what materials, any advice, that's where I hang out. So if you post a question to there, I'll answer it for you. That's what you get for being a patron of mine. Then finally, last but not least, there's the watch call it. There's the uh what's the what's the phrase I'm using for it? The behind the scenery. Yeah, and this is just an area where I'm posting stuff from the studio, like I posted pics of these and I post some of the stuff that's coming up in the future and get ideas of projects to work on. And basically it's the patron access to behind the scenery. Yeah, so, yeah, you get all of that for being part of patron. Yeah, and on top of that, for supporting me. Now, the way it works is, patron, you just support Choose to support how many videos a month you want to support. You only have to support it for a dollar. That's the minimum amount you need to support. Just one video for one dollar. Yeah, and you're good. You're in. You get all that extra stuff. Yeah, typically I do about five, or in the past, and what I'm aiming to do is about five videos. Yeah, so five videos a month. So if you pledge like, if you back five videos for a dollar a video, most it's gonna cost you is $5 a month, max, okay? But I'll leave that for you to decide. In the meantime, yeah, just remember, it does help me get on my feet. And if you are a patron, jump on the Discord. Just remember that you've gotta go into your patron account, yeah? Go to the apps on your patron account in the settings and just link it to Discord. It's just got a button linked to Discord, just so you get access to the patron only area. But other than that, things are going great. And as you can see in other, other areas, things are going great. It's good to be in the studio. It's good to be making terrain videos. Like I said, the first few, they didn't really make the cut. But I'm relaxing into it now. Now, I know you don't want all this 
gossip and all that sort of stuff when you come for your train videos. But, you know, I've got to mention it, haven't I? Right, in the meantime, we're going to carry on getting these Mod Podged up. So what I'm going to do is, we'll get these Mod Podged up, I'll fill at the edges, yeah, and then we'll come back and we'll do the swampy stuff with a bulking loop. I've got some skulls, it's going to be cool. So, see you shortly folks. So that's my, what call it, my groundwork put together and the swampy rocks, they've come together really nice. Have a look. Yeah, as you can see, the set has come out great. Yeah, nice and firm, certainly firm enough for wargaming. Yeah, we've got our trees integrated in there. We've put around our banks. Yeah, I've got some skulls integrated in, some Hearst Art skulls. And I've even sort of started putting in my pustules. And I've carried this theme across the other bits. Yeah, so we've got this one here. That works really well. Yeah, this one here. Quite like this one. That's quite an involved piece. But it's got all the key elements in. And this is important because these key elements tie them into these pieces. Yeah, so the skulls, the swampy bits, the trees, the pustules. It all brings it together. Yeah, which is what the main aim has been. So my rocks are done. Yeah, they're looking good. The next stage is the set's actually ready for development, i.e. we need to take it up a little a notch and get more painted. So that is the next stage in this build. Yeah, now we've got the complete set up. We've got five pieces here, five pieces, six pieces there. So that's an 11 piece set, which I think is a decent um, amount. Yeah, so just to run down, squirty foam rocks, yeah? Put down a, a bin bag, yeah, foam doesn't stick to the bin bag. Make sure you turn your can upside down and give it a good shake, yeah? Don't make my mistake. And then once you've got all your rocks done, it's just a simple matter of getting some sandpaper, sanding them down so they sit flat. Once they sit flat, you can glue them in place and then it's a matter of hard coating them. In this case, I've gone with watch glue with Mod Podge. Of course, you can go with something such as a, a filler coat, yeah, as in thin down filler, stippled on or brushed on, and then stippled to give it a more coarsey texture. That all works. But above all, nice lo looking technique, nice interesting technique to get some interesting rock textures without going down the standard you know, expanding polystyrene foam or XPX extruded polystyrene foam. So, overall I'm quite pleased. It's been a while since I've wrapped these up. This is the first terrain video of 2024. The 2024 comeback tour is well in advance. The next video is going to be painting these up and putting the resin swamp effect on them. Yeah, so that will be next week. Yeah, because that's what I'm going to be working on next. But in the meantime, huzzah! Yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, if you're glad seeing me with a smile on my face making terrain videos again, then you can help me out. There's links on the screen and there's links down below. If you really want to help me out, yeah, you can jump on the kit list and grab me a one-off from, from something from the studio kit list from Amazon. Yeah, or jump on Patreon, become part of the clan and get on the Discord. Yeah, all the links are down below, guys. I appreciate the support. Thanks for helping keep me in the happy place. I'm going to crack on. All the best, yeah? Ta-da!